He's a fit, healthy-minded man. He's a World Cup winner. And he's someone who's, I think, is, is going to be up for any kind of challenge that someone throws at him. He's doing this very specifically for Bourne, you know, raising consciousness of premature birth. When you cut that digital umbilical cord and you put yourself back into nature, back into dealing with the elements, very different things will happen on the psyche and in the body. I wasn't brought up thinking about Scott and the South Pole and the typical kind of, you know, explorer rhetoric. I never felt myself as an explorer. I was just, and honestly, it was sort of exploring my own understanding of myself. And when you go off on any adventure, you're breaking the routine of your understanding. You're going to a territory completely unknown. You don't know how you're going to react. With all of these trips, it's mental over physical. That's the route less explored, right, is always the mental part of it. <laughs> Wild man of the North Pole. <laughs> Fucking hell. Oh, hello, get in, man. How you doing? How you doing, man? What are you doing in here? Yeah, well, I'm just doing some training, but you can never be too careful in them nares parts. <laughs> yeah, I don't tend to hang around in my shed in, yeah, in, in Arctic say, conditions. In Arctic. <laughs> um, so I'm going for a baby charge called Bourne. Uh, my wife and I, uh, we lost a little baby called Freddie, September 19th, 2002. And during that process, we met a, a saint of a man called Mark Johnson. And he's now doing a lot of research into uh, preterm birth, the, the reasons why, and how perhaps we could prevent and keep babies in the womb for another week, another two weeks, another three weeks. And that's the difference between life and death. It's the most dangerous time of your life. Right. You think going to the North Pole is dangerous. No, coming out of the womb, being born, is statistically the most dangerous. You have to do something where your friends yeah, think you challenge. might die. Yeah. Is is the is the real Do you concept. think you might die? Are you worried no. about that? But you've collected a lot of money already, I presume. We've raised six hundred thousand oh. pounds. I know I've got to go to North Pole yeah. because yeah, you know, I've got three kids in the house behind you. I wouldn't have any if it wasn't for this bloke. Quite literally now, I don't want to quote Al Pacino from any given Sunday, but life is the very six inches in front of your face, <laughs> okay? And right now, yeah. the North Pole is about a mile away. Yeah. The most important thing they've been telling me about is not just the gloves, but it's, it's these little layers. inners, man. It's yeah. the merino layers. There you, go, there you go, you look like you're about to go rob a bank. <laughs> <laughs> I got a bit of advice when I first went there, which was, you sweat, you die. When you start to move and pull, you're obviously going to generate a lot of heat. And what you don't want to do is be, if you're comfortable and you feel warm, I would say take layers off. You know, I mean, the other thing I would say is when you're sleeping at night inside your sleeping bag, the thing yeah. that you don't want to do, the, the natural thing to do is you want to, you want to get in your bag like this. But the, the trick is not to breathe into your bag. Yeah, don't get moisture. Because if you get moisture in your bag... You die. You sweat, you die. And you imagine you're there and you're cold, and now you're cold, so your core's cold and your hands yeah. are cold, and you need to take a piss. Try and find your zip. Try and get the zip undone. I'm just gonna wee here. Yeah, right? Because <laughs> so my goat trick. Because these are, these are tucked in like this. They put these tiny little strings on. Yeah. And you'll be like... Oh, man. And you're trying to get your hands, and then yeah. you're gonna have to take your warm gloves off. Oh, I'm cold already. Yeah, and See, then I'm you're gonna try... slow and I'm cold. And then you're gonna try and have to get this. So what you wanna do yeah. is you get yourself a piece of... Get some string, get yeah. some a rope, and tie it through here, double it down, and have a long string so you can pull it with your there on all your pockets. Tie just a little bit of string that long. Go get some climbing rope. I'm never going to find them in there. And... <laughs> <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Hello! <laughs> and, and, and pee quickly. When you're getting cold, no. capillary shunt. Just do this. Capillary shunt. So you just... You're just literally flicking all, all your blood into your fingers. And if your feet get cold... Yeah. Squat. Squat. Deep squat. Deep squat. Deep squat. Just yeah. do that. And then stamp your feet. Yeah. And keep wiggling your toes. That's it. It's done. It's done. There you go. It's been a long time since I've been down here. <laughs> Have you sort of anticipated how you'll feel when you get to the North Pole or anything like that? Or are you just taking it one step at a time? Uh, it's a really interesting question that you ask, right? We nearly lost Archie in the World Cup. 
I rang a few people. My wife was in intensive care. It's now October 2003. I'm thinking the same thing's happening with Fred. I speak to my old man, one of the people I speak to, and he goes, fate has already robbed you of one thing. Oh. Freddy, don't let it rob you of what you're put on this planet to do, which is win this World Cup. Oh. Do you think when you get to the North Pole and, and you're just about to reach the North Pole, do you think you'll just edge ahead oh, in front yeah, of him? Oh, yeah, I'm going to be first. Just like, yeah. Fucking nice, my guy. After all that. You're like, you're bloody yours, get out of the way. Yeah. What can I control? Training. I have gone to places that I haven't been to since 03. I've absolutely flogged myself. Properly, properly hurt myself. Instagram photos, my mates are going, oh my God, are you coming out of retirement? Snowmageddon, storm ever, helping my North Pole train. Done a little research on David, hadn't met him before. I mean, what a fascinating blow. Skied from Canada to Russia. I mean, 110 days on the ice. Stepped on a rugby field, always believing I would win. Sort of start this with a totally positive mindset of we'll get to the North Pole. Cross those bridges of negativity as and when we get to them. The most important thing is everyone stays safe. I'm in a happy place and I'm spending some great physical time, so I don't let the team down. Put one foot in front of the other. My 60 kg sled behind me, and we start walking, and it's eight or nine hours a day. And we go, and I go, and I go, until he says stop. I'm clearly doing this for Bourne. I would not be going to the North Pole if it wasn't for this fundraising uh, expedition. However, having said that, what an opportunity. What a chance to go to a part of the planet that very few people have been or will do in the future if climate change continues at this pace. Not attached to tangible assets. It's experiences and memories. <laughs>